All right, so today we're going to basically get into a 2015 Cadillac Escalade ESV, show you guys how we're going to basically get the Q system operational again. We're going to replace the actual screen on the Q system, which you'll see is unresponsive. I'm sure if you're watching this, you're probably having the same problem. Don't want to spend, you know, $1,500, $2,000, $2,300 just to fix that. Uh, unfortunately these vehicles have uh, had a bad bad issue with that and we're going to basically replace the screen I'm gonna show you guys how to do it hopefully you like it hopefully you can do it it should be super easy we're gonna knock it out step by step so I hope you can watch this let me know if you have any questions please leave some comments I'll be sure to get back to you and don't forget to subscribe I really really appreciate you let's get to it I got nothing anywhere now it started gradually going out where just the bottom part was not working uh, but now as you can see nothing is working so our goal is to take this off pop that off and uh, basically change just the screen we're not going to change the whole unit of course you can change the whole whole unit that'll probably be easier if that's something that you're looking to do um, but I believe depending on the unit you you would have to get a reprogram we're just going to change this portion which is the portion that gets supposedly goes bad and we're going to see if that works so here's a few tools that uh, I picked up that are for you know taking apart car stuff so hopefully uh, you guys can get some of these I definitely recommend getting some type of plastic tools versus screwdrivers because they won't damage your interior they're also really really sturdy uh, still so these I definitely recommend step one remove the wood grain trim to the left of the radio not bad that piece just popped off just slid that right under there with this little tool and that popped right off right there so I don't know if you could see that that came right off step one right there step two remove the wood grain trim above the radio now you should put down a microfiber or tape to protect your wood grain down but that's the benefit of using plastic pieces is because they will not mess up your stuff as nearly like anything else okay so this piece is supposed to just pop out Step three, remove the ignition button molding. So that popped right off. I don't know if you saw that, but that literally just came off and it looks like the way to put that back on would be to slide down like that and then go right back in. So the good news is, is we didn't have to take this piece off. This literally just pulled up. Let me take this off so you can see this. So you gotta unplug the ignition switch, which I probably should have undid the battery. So the ignition switch comes off. This pops off. See that right there? This little ridge, but it's still it's got enough play in it to where it doesn't mess this up and it still came right out so that was good so you got this piece right there and you have to unplug the ignition switch which just plugs right out no big deal step four remove the wood grain trim to the right of the radio yep 
couple of clips. See those clips right there? Just popped right off. Awesome. Step five, remove the leather trim to the right of the radio. Same thing. It's a little bit of force. Yeah. It's like it kind of goes up. You see these things right here? If you can see those ledges right there. So you have to kind of force it up. But it comes right out, and those are the only pieces that you need to take. Awesome. Step six remove chrome bezel trim around the radio. Force anything. Just use your little trusty tool. Get it back there. Make sure everything comes off. There we go. There we go. Boom. Straight up. Boom. All right. Awesome. So I just had to give it a little bit of force and uh, there is one plug at the bottom right here. I'll show you that plug. Just got a little force, pulled it up and you can see just the snaps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight at the bottom. So two at the bottom, four on the sides and then the two at the top in the middle. If you get those off, you give you a little bit of leverage to pull it straight up. And uh, yeah, came straight out, didn't hit the wood grain. So got that piece off. Now we can get to the screws. Looks like there are more screws and we can pop this unit right out. Step seven, unscrew DVD player and pull forward. You don't need to unplug it all the way. You'll need a seven millimeter socket here. So we're gonna take this uh, DVD player out. Just see if we can rest that down there. Step eight, remove the six screws and pull the radio out. You'll have to unplug all the wires to remove it complete. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, and six. all the way yeah there we go all right we got one plug over here on this side all right there we go and then it looks like another plug on this side same thing boom and we're out so we got one, two, three, four, and then you had two on the side, one and two. You just unplug those. You didn't have to take the DVD. The DVD was plugged in too, but you just had to let that down and then it popped right out. Now we're gonna basically go to town and see if changing out this screen will do the trick. All right, now we got the radio out. You're gonna wanna remove these six black screws first. Okay, once you get the six screws out, you'll be able to slide these side mounts right off. All right, once you get those screws off, the goal will be now to take this back plate off. And basically to do that, you're just gonna remove all these small screws. Forget how many total, but you'll see them uh, all the way on the back. There is two right over here on uh, each side, which you'll have to take off. And once you get those off, you basically be able to pull the back plate right off to get access to it. Now that the back's off, you can access uh, these two screws right here. And this little plug, which you need to just basically pull out with a little screwdriver, just like that. And then you're good to go. Now you just want to turn the unit on its side now and just loosen these screws on each side. Don't unscrew them all the way. Next up, remove these five screws right here. 
So now that you have those screws off, you have these two tabs that are holding this other protective piece on. Once you get those tabs down, you're just going to pull that right off just like that. Next up is removing this screen ribbon that I'm pointing at right here. The way you do this is you have to basically move this little tab upwards and then take some tweezers like this and just delicately pull the ribbon straight out of the connector just like that and then remove this screw right there. The reason you unscrew those other screws earlier all the way is so you can flip up the door and the way you do that is just pull on it with a little mite, it won't break it. Now you're just going to want to unscrew these four screws right here. Now you're going to want to get your screen ready to go so that way once we take out these next few screws you'll have it right there ready to be put on. All right, we're getting down to the wire. We just have literally four screws left to undo to get the screen off. So they got the one in the top right here on the bottom and then in the opposite side. And once those are off, the screen should come right off. You're just gonna pull it out and watch the little ribbon and boom, you're done. Now the ribbon at the bottom of the screen is the one that you had to delicately take off earlier. Um, so we're going to show you when you go to put it back on where you have to slide it through and then slide it back in just to make sure it's good to go. But you can see right here we're going to flip it back over and we're going to get it ready to go. So right here is where you want to put that ribbon when you're putting the new screen back on. You slide it right through that hole and then once you get it on there you just tighten back up the screen and redo everything in reverse order the same way you took it off and it should work like a charm and i'll show you once we get right here where we're putting the ribbon back in you want to grab your tweezers again and then just make sure you delicately push it in and then pull that tab back down on it so good luck looks brand new now we just need to make sure it works so once you get everything put back in, of course, before you put it all back together, you're going to want to test it out, which I already did. But you can see right here, got the screen back in, got it hooked back up, and everything works like a charm. So good luck with everything. If you have any questions, just please leave a comment. I'll be more than happy to hit you back. Good luck.